Hello, today we will talk about a really popular feature of our devices, Bluetooth connectivity. First, let's begin by talking about Bluetooth 3.0, sometimes referred to as classic Bluetooth. The Bluetooth 3.0 on our devices can be used for various features, but first, we will need to pair the external device to the tracker. The pairing parameters are configured in the general menu of the Bluetooth tab. Here we can set if the tracker will be visible to other Bluetooth devices and also its name and PIN code for the connection. It is important to note that if we will select Disable under the Bluetooth radio settings, all Bluetooth functionality will be disabled, including Bluetooth 4.0 functionality. The last setting in the General Settings section is the Security Mode, which allows us to control which devices are able to connect to the tracking device. We are able to limit the connection based on PIN only, using both the MAC list and PIN number, or using only the MAC list. Additionally, we can completely disable the security, meaning that any device will be able to connect to the tracker. The MAC list seen at the bottom of the settings can hold up to five different MAC addresses, meaning that a single device could have up to five separate devices authorized to connect to it. The last setting we will talk about in this window is the Auto Connect to External Device setting, which completes the exact function it states in its name. The tracker will automatically connect to the device listed here, so we can always receive data from the external devices. There are five different connection modes here. None, meaning that the device will not connect to any external device automatically. OBD2. This mode allows us to connect an OBD2 dongle, which has Bluetooth functionality. Any dongle that uses ELM327 or STN1110 could be used to receive data from the vehicle. However, it is important to note that we recommend using our OBD series devices for this use case instead, as it provides a more reliable and stable data reading. Data link. Using this mode, we can connect any external Bluetooth device to the tracker and forward the data to the server. It is useful in case the Bluetooth 3.0 device is not supported, but we want to receive information from it. In a text scanner, this mode allows us to connect a Bluetooth barcode scanner BCST70 and receive the information from the scanner barcodes on the server. User ID. This mode allows us to set up a device that could be used to identify that the driver is currently nearby. After connection, the device will show the MAC address of the connected device under the user ID IO element. Next tab we will talk about today is the Bluetooth 4. Here, we configure all Bluetooth low energy features that our devices offer. The first section we will find here is the common settings, which affect the global operation of the Bluetooth low energy functionality of our devices. The first setting we will see in this window is the non-stop scan functionality. This allows our device to constantly scan for nearby BLE devices, rather than doing it in configured intervals. For some BLE devices, this mode can help us to receive data from them faster, as we do not have to wait for the scan window, but we recommend that it is left disabled for I devices. Next three settings control how ADI, when the device will scan for BLE devices and update their values. By default, the update frequency is set to 30 seconds, which is the lowest possible value. But it does not mean that the sensor value will only update twice a minute. If the sensor or beacon advertises data more frequently and our device reads that data, the I.O. element will be updated immediately. Next, we have the BLE scan duration, which is by default also set to 30 seconds. This parameter defines how long the device will scan and collect data from the BLE devices. 30 seconds is the longest duration we can set, giving us the largest window of opportunity to read the data from the advertising device. Last, 
we have scan retries until error setting, which specifies the number of times the tracking device has to fail to read the data from the sensor until the error code device is not found is shown. By default, it is set to 10 and can be lowered or increased depending on the use case. Our recommendation is not to set this value too low, as it is not infrequent for the scanning device to miss a couple of packets due to poor signal or advertising and scanning windows not overlapping, causing the data to not be read by the tracker. Going further, we have the Bluetooth power level, which changes the Bluetooth transmission range of the tracker. By default, it is set to five, which approximately equates to 15 meters of range. The maximum value is seven, which increases the range of our device to 50 meters. This allows us to use the tracker as a beacon, broadcasting its ID to nearby scanning devices. The ID that will be broadcasted can be configured in the BLE Broadcasting Service ID field. We can configure any four-digit number which will be broadcasted and could be used to identify the tracker. Last, we have the BLE Connection Control, which by default allows the device to be visible to other BLE devices. However, we can disable the BLE connection to hide the device. This also allows us to enable the backup tracker functionality, which adds additional layer of security by using a TAT series device as a backup tracker. Next, we have the BLE serial encryption setting, which can be used to encrypt the BLE communication for additional safety. In order to enable the encryption, we have to generate an AES key, which allows us to encrypt the BLE data packets that are being sent and received by the device. Finally, in the Bluetooth 4.0 window, we have two buttons, which allows the device to enable data reading from custom sensors or our own eye sensors. For a long time, the custom sensor configuration was the only way how we can configure the device to read data from BLE sensors. With this functionality, we can configure up to four BLE sensors and read data from them. After clicking the Custom Sensors button, we will see four tables pop up below where we can configure different custom BLE sensors. By default, the sensors are disabled, but there are three more options we can find here. TZBT05 slash 05 slash 05B mode. In this mode, we can receive data from legacy temperature and humidity TZBT sensors. The configuration of these sensors is pretty basic as we only need to enter the ID of the sensor and the device will start reading data from said sensor. Next, we have the advanced mode, which allows us to receive data from pretty much any BLE device, as long as we know the data transmission protocol for that specific device. With that information, we can configure the tracking device to read various elements from the sensor. However, it is important to note that the data received will not be passed and that will have to be done on the server side. As for the supported sensors, we have a preset list button at the top right of the table, which allows us to automatically populate the table with the values that are already tested and confirm that the data can be read using them. The last thing in order to enable the data reading from the sensor is to enter the MAC address at the top of the window. This will be used to filter all nearby sensors and collect data from the correct one. The data clear period is recommended to be configured only if we are using non-stop scan functionality and it should usually be left at zero seconds. So the data would only be cleared after the sensor is not seen by the device for a set amount of times. The last BLE working mode is the NBL reader. In this mode, we can connect an NBL reader, which allows us to trigger certain scenarios like private business mode, or just working as a driver panic button with the integrated buttons, or to read RFID cards, that way authorizing the driver without a wired reader. 
For this solution to work, we simply enter the MAC address of the reader and save it to the device configuration. Another feature that was implemented together with the 29th branch firmware was a special IY sensors mode, which gives us the possibility to easily configure data reading from up to 100 I sensors. After selecting this mode, we can filter the sensors using their MAC or name. When using a MAC address, the functionality is rather similar to the custom sensors, where we can configure up to four separate II sensors. But if we were to use the name for filtering, we can specify up to 25 different II sensor names. Not only that, but the device will filter all sensors that have the specified part of the name configured. For example, if we would enter the word sensor in this table, the device will collect data from I sensors that are named sensor 1, sensor 2, sensor 3, and so on, making the configuration even simpler. Also, if we were to use the sensor names for filtering the data, we can also set a RSSI level, which determines how strong the signal from the sensor has to be. In order for the data to be accepted by the tracker, and sent out to the server. Finally, we also can generate records with sensor data according to the set interval without taking into account the data acquisition settings. This allows us to adjust the frequency of sensor data depending on your use case and data consumption limitations.